good to go here. I'm going to call the City Council Caucus meeting to order for March 9th, 2015. If the clerk would read item number one. Item number one, for final consideration, a local law to amend the zoning near specific parcels near the corner of Brandywine, and Brandywine Avenue and State Street. All right, we've talked about this. We've had a public hearing uh, without objection on consent. Item number two. Item number two, for original consideration. An ordinance amending the Schenectady City Code regarding the Housing Standard Review Board introduced only with a resolution calling for a public hearing to amend Chapter 68 of the City Code Housing Standard Review Board on March 23, 2015. Without objection on consent, item number three. Item number three, a resolution calling for a public hearing regarding the possible closing of the pedestrian tunnel between Watt Street and Grout Park on March 23, 2015. Without objection on consent, item number four. Item number four, a resolution authorizing the issuance of a revocable permit number 589 for 96 J Street. Discussed in committee without objection on consent, item number five. Item number five, a resolution authorizing the sale of 126 Robinson Street. Discussed in committee without objection on consent, item number six. Item number six, a resolution authorizing the city of Schenectady to settle a tax certiorari for Cesar Manishi. Discussed, Mr. Mr. Kozier. If we make that correction in the this amend it okay all right we'll take that as a motion to amend is there a second okay mr mr ferrari um all in favor aye okay thank you for catching that all right so we will then put the amended motion on the agenda for the consent okay item number six or seven rather Item number seven, a resolution authorizing the city of Schenectady to settle a subrogation claim with Nationwide Insurance as subrogee of Robert Watts. Okay, discussed in claims without objection on consent. Item number eight. Item number eight, a resolution honoring the John F. Kennedy Division I Ancient Order of Hibernians, as well as all people of Irish descent throughout the city of Schenectady on the occasion of the Feast of St. Patrick this March 17, 2015. Okay, we will take this one out of order. Mr. Ferrari will present that. Item number nine. Item number nine, a resolution authorizing the Festival Cinema Visible of Persian-speaking countries and communities. This will also be taken out of order. Ms. Peraza will present. Item number 10. Item number 10, a resolution recognizing Jennifer Lawrence as the 2015 Youth Build Director of the Year. This will also be taken out of order. Mr. Kozier will present that one. And item number 11. Item number 11, a resol under contract and supply, a resolution accepting the bid and awarding the contract for the City Hall boiler replacement to Campedo Plumbing and Heating. Also discussed in committee without objection on consent. If there's nothing else to come before the City Council Caucus, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Kozier, seconded by Mr. Riggi. All in favor? Aye. I will now call the City Council Caucus meeting to order for March 9th, 2015, and ask you to rise for the invocation by Reverend Butler from Full Liberty Fellowship. We give thanks tonight. We give thanks for the goodness. We give thanks for the presence. We give thanks for the power. We give thanks for unity. And as we stand in this great hall, with this great body of government and this great city within the great state of New York. We invite the spirit of collaboration, cooperation, unity, that we push aside differences and that we invite that which will help the people, strengthen the people, empower the people. We ask you to impart wisdom into this body, into our mayor, into our governor, and we ask that you just continue to be with them and continue to give your love, your power, and your strength. Amen. 
I'll call on Judge March Mark Blanchfield to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, if the clerk would call the roll. Ms. Barrazzo? Present. Ms. Porterfield? Here. Mr. Ferrari? Here. Mr. Cozier? Here. Mr. Riggi? Here. Mr. Mutavaran? Present. Ms. King? Present. All right, uh, before we get to our out of order resolutions, we do have a special, special presentation tonight. I'm going to call on Mr. Cozier to announce that. Not good. Here we go. Now we're on because our, our poor kids would have been in trouble here. No microphone. So this is a good dress rehearsal for you. Figuring out how the mics work. Uh, anyway, welcome everybody. It's just uh, another wonderful evening here at the City Council Chambers, uh, Mr. Mayor and, and Madam President, to see again our chambers filled with our youth, uh, not only from the City of Schenectady, but from Schenectady County. And we certainly thank you all for being here uh, this evening. And uh, if I may, I'd like to uh, call upon a good friend of the City Council and uh, a former colleague of mine and some of us here, uh, the Honorable Judge uh, Mark Blanchfield, to come in and introduce our guest from Central Park Middle School. Judge? Thank you, Mr. Kozier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. It's such a pleasure to be back here in this context, but I'm not here as your city court judge. I'm here as the uh, proud parent uh, of a child at Central Park International Magnet School, uh, and uh, I want to speak on behalf of all of the parents to say thanks to the uh, uh, administration. Ms. Chatan is here as well. Thanks to her and to the, uh, uh, the teachers and the, uh, uh, the staff. Uh, we have uh, also some uh, parents here, uh, Mrs. Knopf and Mrs. Rathbone, who have helped out tremendously with this production of Alice in Wonderland, which will be uh, running at Central Park on Friday night at 7 p.m. Uh, this coming Friday, and Saturday at 1.30, a matinee. Uh, so with those thanks uh, and that announcement, I would like to invite uh, uh, the director of the play, Anna, would you want to mind come on, coming up? I also want to give a shout out to my brothers and sisters from the Hibernians. And I spent a lot of time there. She's an up and coming uh, a member at some point. We'll get her over there. But uh, uh, we have, we're look forward to that holiday as well. So. Hi, my name is Anna Blanchfield, and I'm an eighth grader at Central Park. I was given the unique opportunity this year to direct the school musical Alice in Wonderland Junior, which will be March 13th, Friday at 7 and March 14th, Saturday at 1.30. Tickets are $2 for a student and $3 for an adult. It has been really fun and really rewarding to do. I'd like to thank all the faculty, especially Ms. Knopf, for helping this come together and for supporting us, and for the mayor and for city council letting us perform here tonight. Tonight we're performing two songs, uh, Alice in Wonderland and Very Good Advice. I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> so. Um, good evening, my name is Ms. Chatan and I'm the principal at Central Park. Um, it's pretty exciting for me in that it's a new position for me. I just started in September with these guys, but I just wanted to emphasize that they did all of this themselves. There were no adults giving them any direction. Anna did all of the auditions. She organized where the students would go. It's a huge accomplishment and it's amazing what our kids can do when the adults sort of get out of the way and let them do what they can do. So I just wanted to emphasize this is all them and we're really very proud of them. Thank you.
Alice jumped into the dark rabbit hole and fell for what seemed like three and a half weeks. More like four and a quarter. She fell and fell and fell. But she wasn't alone. I give myself very good advice, but I very seldom follow it. That explains the trouble that you're always in. Be patient is very good advice, but the waiting makes me curious. I'm sure that I know right from wrong. The price of your hat is not always the measure of your brain. Be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. Necessity is the mother of invention. Beauty without virtue is like a flower without per Tempest fugit. Don't worry, be happy. I give myself very good advice. Director, Ms. Blanchfield. <laughs> thank you, students. And again, thank you, parents, for coming out uh, this evening. And again, we look forward to the performances uh, Friday night and uh, Saturday afternoon matinees. And if you, uh, once you get done with Alice in Wonderland, you can get over to the high school. The uh, Blue Roses Theater has their production of Romeo and Juliet project, uh, which is going on, starts Wednesday of this week with a matinee on Saturday as well. Uh, that has an adult theme to it, so it's for mature audiences. So again, come here, bring your little ones, and then enjoy an evening at the high school. So thank you very much, and good luck on Friday. And while they're exiting, I'm going to invite Joe Piazza to come up and make an announcement related to open stage media. Um, this is just a, a minor detail compared to the tragedy that's happened across the street, but um, our live video cable that allows us to go live with this meeting was attached to that building across the street, so that cable is now gone, so technically we're not able to go live. However, we are still streaming at Livestream, and it's, it's www.livestream.com slash city of Schenectady, all one word, so we're live on the internet streaming. We also, thanks to the wizards behind the curtain at Proctors and OSM, we've managed to loop the live internet stream back onto the TV channel. So we are, I believe, also live tonight, also on channel 18 normally. It's a little bit of a, a glue and rubber bands and a paper clip, so I don't know. The image quality is not going to be great, but we're still, we're still live, and I have no idea how long this will be, but we're going we're gonna to muscle through it until until we get the cable restored. But anyway, so just know we are still going live whenever we can. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Joe. All right, we will move now to our out of order resolutions. Um, the first one is for St. Patrick's Day, and I believe we have some dancers to join us too.
Uh, let's do let's do the dancers first.
this. This is always a treat when we get close to St. Patrick's Day. Can I keep coming right over here? Oh, may I have all the Hibernians here as well? Is there anybody else? How ironic, a nice Italian boy giving out an Irish certificate. <laughs> This is a resolution honoring the John F. Kennedy Division I Ancient Order of Hibernians and its Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians, as well as all people of Irish descent throughout the city of Schenectady on the occasion of the Feast of St. Patrick this March 17, 2015. Madam President? You have the floor. Whereas the city of Schenectady is proud to be home of several Irish residents and those of Irish descent who have contributed to the well-being of Schenectady, and whereas for the past 134 years, the John F. Kennedy Division I of the Ancient Order of Hibernians and its Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians have demonstrated their commitment to the local community by making financial donations, volunteering with deserving organizations, and performing good deeds. And whereas the Irish are just one of the many immigrant people who fled to these shores seeking refuge from the yoke of oppression. And whereas the, the, the year 2015 marks the 150th anniversary of the end of the American Civil War, a war in which many ethnic groups, including the Irish, were called upon to support and defend their new home. Now therefore it be resolved that the mayor, Gary R. McCarthy, and the city council do hereby pause in their deliberations to reflect on the contribution of immigrant populations, but particularly the Irish, in keeping this country united in the context of the American Civil War, and be it further resolved that the mayor, Gary R. McCarthy, and the city council declare that on Tuesday, March 17, 2015, the city will celebrate St. Patrick's Day in memory of those brave for forebearers who advanced the cause of liberty during the American Civil War and in recognition of the contributions of Irish American people everywhere. Madam President, may I move this? Yeah, all right, I have a second. Mr. Mutavaran, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you very much for a proclamation. I just want to invite you um, Sunday and Tuesday to our home, 1748 State Street, the Hibernians. There will be uh, refreshments, food, music, and uh, Irish step dancers, and it will be a good time. So come on down, enjoy the festive day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Wonderful you. job again. Yes, thank you very much. to have a picture taken with the mayor, so. All right, the second out of order resolution is for the Persian Film Festival, Ms. Perrazzo. The person who's accepting that is on his way over, but he's not here. Oh, Lisa, yes. look, we're gonna hold. Apparently we're the person accepting that is on his way, but he's not here yet. Okay. All right, so then, oops, where's Mr. Kozier? <laughs> We're just going to pause for a minute here. Actually, let's go on to the part of the agenda. If going down, now the next item would be the approval of the minutes of the meetings on February 23rd and March 3rd, 2015. Do I have a motion, Mr. Riggi, seconded by Ms. Perrazzo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, communications and petitions? Communications presented to the City Council for Monday, March 9th, 2015. Under the category of official, from the mayor, a list of appointments dated March 9, 2015. 
Under general, a letter from the Schenectady Veterans Council to the City of Schenectady, extending their gratitude for the donation to support their organization. A letter from the Veterans of Foreign War of the United States, Post 357, to the City of Schenectady, extending their gratitude for the donation to support their organization. Under petitions, there are none. Okay. Then we'll go back to our out of order resolutions. And uh, Mr. Kozier, I'll invite you to make the presentation to Jennifer Lawrence of Youth Build. We're going to have to call this our youth build session here. Every other week it seems we have them here. Come on in, folks. Everybody who's associated or, or whose life has been touched uh, by Jennifer, I know it's been many. Please come forward. Please come forward. This is just a, a wonderful recognition to a wonderful lady. Come on in. Come, come, come. This is wonderful. I was just saying to Jen, this is not even a fraction, a fraction of the people that uh, she has touched in, uh, and, and the wonderful program. And again, I, I just caught this because I was uh, at a fundraiser with Northeast, and, and I happened to see the flyer, the newsletter, and I said, what just a wonderful recognition uh, that was given to her. And uh, this piece of paper really doesn't mean a lot, but you know what? We just want to show our appreciation to you as well. So let me read this if I may. Madam President? You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, recognition. A resolution recognizing Jennifer Lawrence as the 2015 Youth Build Director of the Year. This is a nationwide uh, honor. Whereas the community action organization, Youth Build USA, operates 276 programs nationwide in pursuit of its mission to assist young people in transforming their lives and communities through training, community service, and sustainable wage jobs. And whereas Youth Build Schenectady is a nine-month program designed to engage at-risk, low-income youth between the ages of 18 and 24 who need to complete their high school education and receive career training. And whereas Youth Build USA recently honored Jennifer Lawrence, Northeast Parent and Child Society Executive Program Director of Career Services, that of course includes Youth Build Schenectady with their President's Award for Director of the Year. Whereas national organization chose Ms. Lawrence from a pool of more than 250 youth build directors nationwide and based their choice on Ms. Lawrence's ability to engage youth in the city and her commitment to seeing them succeed. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor, Gary R. McCarthy, and the city council do hereby pause in our deliberations to recognize Jennifer Lawrence as the 2015 Youth Build USA Director of the Year and to offer her achievement as a noteworthy example of her community involvement. Madam President, I move this. All right, is there a second? Okay, Ms. Porterfield. <laughs> Since you were the first one I could see. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Jennifer, congratulations. And I don't have the talent like all the lovely people before. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, um, the national recognition was a complete shock, very humbling, but I have to say, um, getting notice of city recognition meant the world to me because this is the city that I love, that I work in, that I have so many memories in and that I care about. And um, Youth Build Schenectady is here in Schenectady to stay. And I, um, that meant the world, so thank you. I also have to say that I was thinking about this um, Vision is only as good as people who believe in it and back it up. And what you see here with me are a bunch of people who believe in it and back it up every day. I couldn't, this isn't about me, this is about people who live the walk every day. So thank you. And um, there, you know, some people think that what I do is different. What I do isn't difficult compared to um, each and every one of the people that I look at. So. I have to get up and do this every day. I have um, a student, a young lady here today who just gave birth less than two weeks ago. I have a young man who's a graduate who's going to work an overnight 12-hour shift. I have a teacher who's also our job coach, our driver, our uh, counselor, and anything else that we need her to do. So I could, the list goes on and on. Um, I have a 
wonderful program director who spent all weekend helping two graduates, our two students, get to Washington, D.C. with men's warehouse suits, new clean shaven faces, <laughs> fedora hats, personal freedom. So these are the little things that um, being small and the faithful, you know, gives you a great reward in the large. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again, Jennifer. Well deserved. All right, we're going to still hold off on the uh, second out of order resolution. I will move now to committee reports. Any committee reports? No? Nope. Okay. Uh, then we will move to privilege of the floor related to the legis <coughs> legislative agenda, and I have no one signed up, so I'm going to declare that portion closed. Um, I will move then to approval of the legislative agenda. Mr. Riggi, seconded by Mr. Kosher. All in favor? Aye. Um, and then we will now go to privilege of the floor regarding city business. I have eight people signed up. The first is Joe Rodriguez. Good evening and happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just uh, mention the fact uh, that uh, we're very proud to be using the service of the car wash on State Street that opened up, I think, in November uh, for that price. I hope the city does some business with them um, for $3.99 or $5.99. You can't go wrong. I mean, second, um, I just want to touch on this fact that I think it was unfair. I don't want to, I don't want to sound racist, but I had to say that the Gazette seems to bring out some form of racism in the city because when they put the article in the Gazette about the people being behind in taxes, you notice how everyone on the front page was a minority and not one Caucasian. So I find that very unfair that to release that information might be public, but just to release uh, minorities is not. And the third thing I'm still, I can't understand for the life of my, to understand why there's a still employees on the city payroll that are not qualified to perform duties. We have a gentleman that's going around citing homes and failed the test twice. So why is he still an employee? Um, are we on the same playing field that is uh, the city when city owns properties that are in violations? Are the city being cited? I don't find, I, I'm pretty sure I can almost bet that they're not. I know that the city has some homes, and I know for a fact that are in violation. And who's, who's citing them? Again, God bless everyone. I hope everybody has a good St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Again, I'm going to pause, and we are now going to move back to the Persian Film Festival resolution. Ms. Perazzo. We're going to read this resolution together. Okay, good. Because come right over here. There are some words that I'm not going to be able to pronounce, so I'm going to have to rely on you. We'll read it all. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to pass the microphone. And you think I can read? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. May I have the floor? You have. Thank you. you. This is a resolution recognizing the festival Cinema Invisible of the Persian-speaking countries and communities, whereas March 20th marks the celebration of the spring equinox in the Persian New Year, New Year known as Nowruz. Nowruz and where Persian-speaking communities such as those who have emigrated from Iran, Afghanistan, and uh, Tajikistan, and uh, uh, Kurdistan, and Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan, 
and many other countries. Around. Northern India celebrate this cultural new year through unique rituals that include poetry, music, gifts, celebrating the prior, excuse me, celebrating the prior year's achievements and expressing the hopes and dreams of the year to come. And whereas the GE Theater at Proctors will host the fourth annual Festival Cinema Invisible from March 20th to 22nd, celebrating the invisible cinema of Persian-speaking countries and communities through the study of the conditions, circumstances, and milieu, milieu. of its featured films and filmmakers. And whereas this event is not a traditional film festival, in that it also seeks to engage the community through enriching panels and workshops wherein filmmakers, social scientists, academics, and critics may review the origins and causes of prejudice. And whereas a unique event in upstate New York, the 2015 Festival Cinema Invisible will screen over 20 Persian language films in all genres, with two having their world premiere here in Schenectady and five others having their American premiere. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, Gary R. McCarthy, and the city council do hereby pause in their deliberations to recognize the forthcoming 2015 Festival Cinema Invisible and thank those who have put so much hard work into the event. I'd like to move this resolution. Okay, it's seconded by Mr. Mudavaran. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam President, thank you very, very much. Uh, I believe that in a time that every time we open the uh, television or open a page of a newspaper, we hear about wars and uh, uh, conflicts all around the world. It is our duty as one of the most ancient cities in the American uh, uh, soil, Schenectady having been incorporated in 1779, just a few years after the uh, revolution. I think it's our time to bring people together and speak of peace. That's exactly what film uh, festival, Persian film festival, uh, festival Cinema Invisible intends to do by bringing a variety of people from all walks of life, all the artists, to um, communicate, to exchange ideas, and hopefully create a better world for all of us. I thank you very, very much for this resolution. Thank you. I hope it goes work really well. All right, we'll move back to privilege of the floor regarding general city business, Marva Isaacs. Madam President, Mr. Mayor, City Council. You know, um, I want to talk about Avery and Dwayne. Avery Street is a one-way street. It was made a one-way street a couple of years ago because a child was killed there. I keep asking for stuff. For the, there's a, um, at the end of Strong Street to put a sign there, no entry. Um, I called John Coluccio about three, four times. I could, Chief he'll call and give me the number. Well, I thought it was wrong because he wouldn't answer the phone. So I called the mayor's office and get the number, the same number from the secretary. I spoke to John Mutuveran and I spoke, spoke to um, Chad Putnam. And they, called, they talked to him. This man gonna say, call me. This is how he addressed me. Send this email out. Um, I never spoke to that woman. I am not that woman. My, for him, I'm Mrs. Marva Isaacs. I'm not that woman. I didn't know that we had a second Bill Clinton in Schenectady. I am not that woman. But I want to thank John Mutavera and Mr. Chad Putnam. And I will thank Mr. Coluccio because they put the sign up. And Chief Kill Collin who I appreciate very much. He went out there and checked on it. And next thing I want to, you know, these firemen, listen, my heart is go out to these firemen. They work so hard. They need a medal for the work that they do out there in that cold, you know. We need to, to put our firemen on a pedestal. Thank you. 
Thank you. Ed Smith. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, Council Members, Mr. Mayor. I'm here to talk to you tonight about snow emergencies. Um, Catskill, Cohoes, Saratoga, Watervliet, Troy, Albany. What do these all, towns all have in common? They are local municipalities that do declare snow emergencies. Snow emergencies which are necessary in order to plow streets back to the curb. As I travel this city, I see many streets that are two lanes that are now reduced to barely one lane due to snow banks protruding into the street up to two feet on each side. This dangerously narrows the street, increasing the probability of head-on collisions as people cross the yellow line to maneuver around parked vehicles. The narrowing of the streets also creates a public safety hazard in that emergency vehicles would find it difficult, if not impossible, to traverse such areas. I've lived in Schenectady for over a decade now and watched winter by winter as the maintenance of our streets during and after a snowfall has deteriorated. I live on Baker Ave now and last winter there was a medical emergency on our block. Instead of emergency vehicles coming in from the plum side of Baker Avenue, they were forced to travel the wrong way up from Union Avenue. And this winter the streets again were so narrowed that school buses leaving Howard Elementary needed assistance from people living on the street to navigate safely without striking parked vehicles. I can only imagine if there had been an emergency, the likelihood of a tragedy would have been substantially increased. Baker Ave is listed on street signs as a priority street. Alternate side parking rules in effect after three inches of snowfall until it is properly removed. So how did it progress to this point, one might ask. The reason is simple, due to a lack of enforcement of the existing rules. This is my second winter on Baker Avenue and I've watched as the parking rules are completely ignored. People know they are safe to do so since they won't be ticketed or towed. In the period between February 1st and February 10th, I made numerous calls to the City Street Department, only to be told that I would be called back. These calls never came. Contacted the City Verge via Twitter, no response. Called the Mayor's office twice, leaving messages, no response. On February 8th, the plow came down to attempt to clear our block. He got stuck at Plum and Baker and left. You would think that, that he would report back and they would come do something about it. No such luck. On the 10th, after no vehicles could travel our park due to a bad parking job by one of the citizens, the police arrived. They promptly got stuck trying to navigate the street. At that point, they got motivated and cleared the odd side of the street as per the parking rules, even towing a vehicle. You would think at this point the city would stay in a plow, the whole side of the street being cleared. They didn't. The next morning, I called the city yet again with no response. In desperation, I called the city police only to be told to call the media. Honestly, I'm not sure which is worse, the city's ineptitude or their attitude about the situation. So I did just this. I contacted YNN9, who contacted me to interview me, as well as I contacted the mayor's office. Coincidentally enough, emergency no parking signs went up on my block immediately, and that night dump trucks were sent up to clear the frozen banks. I'd wonder how much money it cost the city versus doing it right the first time. This city seems to be playing a card out of the deck of Mayor Rass's Corning. However, this is not Albany in the 1970s. It's Schenectady in 2015. Its citizenry deserves better. Its citizenry deserves to know that if there's an emergency, they do not have to worry if the proper apparatus can get to them. Mr. Smith, I need you to summarize, please, your time is yes, up. Yes, ma'am. Its citizenry, just one more sentence, deserves to know that they will not have to worry that they will get onto a head-on crash on a two now one-lane street. And most of all, its citizenry deserves something other than radio silence. Thank you for your time, Adam. Thank General. you. Joy Hall. I'm Joy Hobbs Connected Eight. Plus, I'm a C, uh, senior trustee of the uh, Senior GE Union. I say number one thing. I say we got to do a better job of cleaning up these streets because it's getting pretty tough for seniors to get around and on the streets. And I give the fire uh, people a lot of credit for all being out in that cold and everything else. But I say. We gotta clean up these streets better. We gotta fix it so people won't be walking in the road. That's dangerous. And I feel that everybody should keep the fire steamers up and check them and make sure that they're working right. That's what has to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Tony Bonome. Tony Bonome Bellevue, uh, 
I keep beating a dead horse down, but uh, last week I didn't get an answer from the mayor on the bridge. I want to know, Ms. King, if you or the other six can give me any idea if this bridge is going to be started at the Oak Street Bridge, if they're going to start building this thing this year. I mean, I'm sick and tired of listening. Can someone give me an answer? Are we going to start this bridge? What's going on with it? Thank you. Thank you. Stanley, is it Desharn? Councilman, guests, good evening. I have tried for several years to have the tunnel underneath the Watch Street to the other side closed. I have not been successful. I'm not going to try too hard tonight. I'm just going to say that I still feel the same way. And I'm not going to beat up on the poor people. I've been beaten up a little bit tonight. But it would be nice if we got a couple of potholes fixed too, but can't ask, can't ask for everything. Yes. God bless you all. You need it. Thank you. Patricia Smith. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Madam President, Council Members. As um, Mount Pleasant Neighborhood President, I've been asked due to uh, numerous burglaries by the, several, uh, by the residents of the Grout Park Tunnel that you please consider closing that tunnel. We've had a lot of problems, a lot of criminal activity. Uh, it's a great escape route, and it would help, I think, the neighborhood uh, to be a little bit more safe, and there's, there's really no good reason for that tunnel anymore. It's, it's past its use. So please, we're asking the neighbors would appreciate, consider closing that tunnel for their safety. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary McLean. Good evening. My name is Mary McLean. I live in the city. I had prepared my remarks for last, the last meeting, but I wasn't able to make it. City Council is spending taxpayer dollars needlessly. When council voted for the 2015 budget back in October, the budget included money to cover bonuses for the trades union whose contract was being negotiated at the time. The public could speak to the issue at a December meet, city council meeting. Had 15 people stood at this microphone and asked council to vote no, the taxpayers please, please would have been meaningless because the money was already in the budget for the bonuses. On February 23rd, Council finalized the deal. The bonus was a gift and not a financial necessity for the city. The item involved couples who are city employees. They have a two income household, steady paying jobs, medical coverage for both partners, and other lifetime benefits, all the things I don't have. But my tax dollars are used to give to others who want more for themselves. It is wrong to spend tax dollars in this way. As for the $40,000 council spends on fluoride every year, I think council needs to look elsewhere at other communities to see how they handle this issue. Another unnecessary expenditure that recently came to my attention is the purchase of software 
so taxpayers can pay their taxes online. For the past 10 years, this city has tried to bring pedestrians to the downtown area. With the blink of an eye, that concept has been turned upside down. What have you done? Reduced foot traffic downtown, two diminished bus ridership, three lost, I'm having trouble, I didn't bring my glasses, lost business to restaurants and store ownership, owners, four destroyed a concept that had been nurtured for many years, bought something that was not necessary, and spent money needlessly. Mrs. McLean, I need you to Even summarize. Even the city department had told me when people go downtown, they don't go downtown just to pay their taxes. Please summarize. Council took it away. This is nuts. Four seats are up next year. Folks, look elsewhere for your representation. Thank you. It will serve you well. All right, I have no one else signed up to speak, so I'm going to declare that portion of the meeting closed, and we will move on to miscellaneous business of the council. Mr. Rigby. Ah, it's hot. Uh, this has been a tough week, obviously, and everybody knows why. But again, I know everybody's going to say the same thing. Can't say enough about the first responders to this tragedy. Uh, they worked under terrible conditions. And just thoughts and prayers to all the people that had to work in those conditions. And thoughts and prayers to the people in that building, and the people that may have perished in that building. It's, it's really mind-boggling when you think of these things and how grateful we should be for just our everyday life and, and how it can change just like that. But it's come to my attention that there was a, a, a dispatcher that handled this, this thing with a real cool hand, and he, uh, he, he orchestrated a master plan and kept co constant communication with the development of the event and all the various entities that had to be brought into this. He kept the air clear, and uh, again, these are the people behind the scenes that nobody really knows about or hears about. But I understand from people that know that he did a magnificent job in, in orchestrating this whole thing and making sure the right people got to the, to the scene. But again, just my heartfelt condolences to everybody that was involved, uh, uh, victims of this fire, and again, our hats off to all our people that worked hard in every department of this city. To really control this, it's really amazing, as best that they did, because it, it could have been much worse. So anyhow, uh, with that aside, the Bellevue Preservation is meeting this Thursday, March 12th at 7 p.m. Scheduled to speak is Fire Chief Ray Senecal. And the farmer's market is looking for vendors, again, to participate from June to September. And anyone interested, or if you know anybody that may be interested to vend there, please call 393-0403. 393-0403. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Ms. Porterfield. Thank you. Uh, and I also want to say thanks to the first responders for doing a fabulous job at what was a very serious tragedy, firefighters as well as police, um, working under those circumstances. Um, and to all the residents that live there and those that are missing, you know, my heart goes out to you. And I want to really say a special thanks to Christ Church, how they opened their doors to have people come there and to stay, and to the Red Cross for the fabulous job they did. I had the opportunity to go visit some of the folks who live there. Um, on Friday, I went to the Christ Church just to stop in and, you know, um, to say sorry about what happened and just to give people an ear to listen to and you know folks were just really in a state of shock so 
um, I appreciate all that the city is doing. That we, I know that City Hall was open to have people come over, and so you know people did whatever they could. You know, it's like when there's a wound, everyone rushes to to make take care of that, and that is what happened. And I just want to say thanks to everyone that did any, every, anything and everything to help to all the different churches and organizations that came out and brought things. Um, and, and I also want to just say about the young dancers tonight, I, I take my hat off to them, that they, uh, the music stopped, but they continued to dance, you know. So I thought that was really great uh, that they were able to do that. Um, we had a couple of people here that came tonight and talked about the potholes, and I've gotten calls about potholes, and I think we all know that there's potholes, but uh, I was asked to mention it tonight, that we really need to do something regarding the potholes. In addition to that, the um, streets, which the gentleman spoke about um, tonight, about this, the narrowing of the streets because of where the cars are parked, and uh, I've gotten at least one phone call that a car was towed, and I'm not sure all the details, and I know that this, the mayor's office is working on that, but that has been a concern this winter as well. Regarding the Oak Street Bridge, two people came to speak uh, tonight. Re um, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, about the, um, the, wa the tunnel. Two people came to speak about that, and I just want to remind folks that there's a public hearing on this on March 23rd, so if people want to come and talk about it, that is an opportunity to um, you know, to come bring other folks to talk about that particular issue at the public hearing on March 23rd. And lastly, I'd just like to announce that the Hamilton Hill Neighborhood Association will be having their monthly meeting this Thursday, March 12th at 6.30 p.m. at the Bethel AME Church, 540 Mumford Street. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Prazo. Yes, thank you. Um, short and sweet. I mirror what my colleague said. I mean, it's just amazing the people the work I think all of our hearts are broken it was just a very difficult thing um, but maybe a little unorthodox but I think a thank you should go out to the press as well our TV stations our um, radio stations our newspapers just the coverage on this story was incredible and I think it was really helpful because a lot of people were very concerned and really wanted to know what was going on. And I think the amount of press coverage kept people away from a really dangerous scene um, because there's always, you know, a lot of concern and maybe even curiosity as to what's going on. So I think, you know, we often forget about that part, but I think they deserve a thank you as well. Thank you. Mr. Ferrari. I know I'd be echoing the sentiments of everyone else here. Um, however, in the early morning of the fire, I received an email from Kelly Marr, who runs an Instagram page called Schenectady Doesn't Suck. And she is one of the many people on our Millennial Council. And she said, what do we do? What can we do? And the beauty of our community is coming together and helping. And Kelly Marr and the Millennial Council set up a GoFundMe page for the victims of the fire. And as of right now, we've raised over $5,000. So we want to thank everyone for the, their donation. And the donations are still open and available, um, I believe, on the Daily Gazette website. Uh, if you look at the article about the fire, you can, it can bring you right to those pages. So I want to thank everyone and thank our first responders. Um, we can't do it without you, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mudavarin. Good evening. Just like all my colleagues here, I would like to express my um, gratitude to the, our public safety official, our staff, city officials, and my hats off to everyone who had helped around the clock. And my heart goes out to the people who have affected with this fire. I was there um, Friday evening at a Christchurch visiting, and it was so sad. It just breaks my heart to see so many people have affected by just one fire. And I encourage everyone, please, donate whatever you can, Red Cross, to go fund me at the Millennium um, site, and help, help our community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Again, I uh, appreciate the Council's comments and the community as a whole. It's a tragic event, but it uh, was, was an impressive response by the uh, fire department, even the police department. It was a coordinated effort. Uh, where a mutual aid plan kicked into place and was able to contain it really to two buildings and the, 
the initial evaluation, they were worried that the fire would spread beyond where it went, but uh, thanks Scotia, Grand Boulevard Fire Department, uh, again, uh, the Red Cross stepped up, as mentioned, Christ Church made their facility available for housing, Schenectady County, uh, even had offers from the City of Albany, are just working in some aspects of it. Uh, State Office of Fire Prevention, uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms is mobilized and assisting uh, a fire department, the fire chief, in determining the cause and origin. That's an ongoing uh, investigation and review. Uh, because of the scope and magnitude of the damage, it's going to be a longer period of time than uh, we would normally expect. It's probably going to run through this week, so there's going to be again, continued inconvenience uh, for people coming in and out of downtown, uh, some of the parking restrictions here. But we appreciate everyone that has worked with the city and uh, helped, uh, uh, again, minimize the impact of what is a just a tragic event. And uh, again, the uh, comments on the tunnel on uh, going under 890, uh, that tunnel is owned by the state of New York under the agreement it's maintained by the city of Schenectady. And where we've looked to close it, uh, state DOT has asked that we hold a public hearing and create a record whether people want it open or whether they want it closed. And again, as been mentioned, the council has called for that public hearing so that we'll go down that uh, path and uh, again get public input and then act accordingly. The Oak Street Bridge, as we've said before, we're doing the engineering study, evaluating it. Uh, we've had some trouble coordinating with the railroad to get access for the evaluation. That report and the cost estimates uh, should be ready fairly shortly, and then hopefully it will be within the budget so that we will be able to rehabilitate it, and we will move forward with that rehabilitation. And uh, with that, uh, Madam President, again, just thank everyone for their uh, support this week and uh, the community outpouring that has come forth to help the, just the many victims of this fire. Thank Mr. Ferrari and uh, his uh, Mil 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 Millennium <laughs> Council for, uh, again, just stepping up in, uh, uh, out of the goodness of everybody's heart, making it uh, better and easier for those people that uh, suffered a tragic loss. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to echo my colleagues' comments. Um, you know, my sympathies go out to all the victims of the fire, and my thanks go out to everyone who has been working to s both put out the fire and deal with everything that they're dealing with now. Um, this, this, I think they did the best job they could have. Um, also, just wanted to remind when people have talked about the snow emergencies, the mayor had a letter to the editor in the Gazette today, I believe, right? Yes, um, where he really addresses the issues related to the snow emergency. So I would encourage any of you who have concerns about that to, you know, read the Gazette. And uh, it's a very good letter and I think a very thorough one. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Kozier, seconded by Mr. Mutavarin. All in favor? Aye.